Welcome to Linda's Corner. My name is Linda Bjork, and today we're going to be talking about how to improve our relationship with ourselves. I'm delighted to welcome special guest, Grace Bean. Grace is a mindset coach who provides people with tools and intuitive guidance to help them overcome self-limiting beliefs and manifest their dreams. You can reach Grace on her website, gracebeing.com, and I'll include a link in the description. Welcome, Grace. I'm so glad that you could join with me today. Hi, Linda. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to meet you. Oh, I am delighted to meet you, Grace, and I'm excited to hear your story. What prompted you to become a mindset coach? Yes, so I started this journey. Um, I was inspired from my own personal experience. Um, I was very unhappy before in my, uh, uh, in my 20s. I was jumping from one corporate job to the other. I was uh, successful in, in all of them, but uh, I felt that uh, something was missing. I never felt fulfilled with what I was doing. And uh, I was also very anxious, very scared. And uh, I was stuck in abusive and toxic relationships as well yeah. for 10 years. Yeah, which was very hard. And my self-esteem was completely broken down. So I started working with a, with a coach myself uh, when I hit rock bottom because I couldn't keep going the way I was going. Um, I was uh, just like in my 20s and I developed psychosomatic symptoms. I ended up in hospital as well. And I realized that something was very wrong in my life. So um, my sister, who I call my guardian angel, she introduced me to this coach who started helping me uh, to realize why I was doing these choices in my life. And uh, with a great deal of inner work, and uh, he taught me uh, how to do meditation and uh, how to reflect on, on my own choices. And it took me months of work but uh, I'm still very grateful to, to my coach because he really helped me uh, transform my life, basically. And uh, I did the 180. I was able to um, heal my, my trauma with, uh, after narcissistic abuse. And I was able to start trusting myself again and to start listening to my intuition. I had a, a profound spiritual transformation as well. I wasn't a spiritual at all before I was an atheist, but uh, gracefully through the meditation practice, I started getting in touch with my spiritual side. And after the light touches you, uh, the transformation is, uh, is impressive. Like even my family, they couldn't even believe what they're seeing in front of their eyes. <laughs> So um, after healing and going through these changes, I started making decisions that were finally aligned to my truth and my values. And uh, now I was able to leave my home country. I left Europe. I, I'm in Indonesia and in Bali right now. It's 6 a.m. here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I managed to establish my own business. I, uh, I did courses, I invested in myself, and now I wanted to pay it forward to help other people who are struggling with the same issues, basically. <laughs> wow, thank you for sharing. Oh, Grace, this is so beautiful. I am sorry for the things that you went through, but I am so grateful that you were able to turn it around and and just become what you were meant to become the transformation that you said that your family was able to recognize and how how much more fulfilled you are oh my heavens so many things to talk about i love that you started with saying that you were successful with dollars and and you know that kind of thing is what most people think success means i am successful when i have the dollars and yet that didn't reflect what was going on inside of you there was still misery inside of you. And now you say you feel fulfilled. And 
there's so much more of a difference of that success that just goes all the way to the core and you're doing things that make you happy and you're able to go and experiment and try new things. And I think all of that is beautiful. And I love that your sister is your guardian angel. I have a sister who is a guardian angel to me as well. So our stories cool. have something in common and that is absolutely beautiful. So I applaud you for being able to transform your life and to come to a place that is joyful. And I'm so glad you were out, able to get out of a relationship that did not serve you, but hurt you. And I'm sorry that that happened. Um, and I hope for beautiful, beautiful relationships in the future. But man, I'm just so happy for you. Thank you for sharing. So I would love Thank you to teach me some of these wonderful things that, that, that turned everything around for you. Yeah, uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, they mean a lot to me. Um, yeah, so it uh, was a difficult journey, but as you're saying, and I see this with a lot of people as well, they come to me and they tell me, I've had goals, I've reached them, and for some reason, I just keep feeling empty and unfulfilled. So... It's like, what's the point of being successful and you feel unfulfilled? So you have to look at what you're doing, what kind of goals you are chasing, right? To, uh, it's important to the goals to be aligned with your truth and your values. So uh, my techniques that really helped me, they all started with um, being mindful and uh, paying attention to uh, the self-narrative that I was telling myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, we mentioned limiting beliefs, for example, and uh, these limiting beliefs are stored in our unconscious mind. So that's why mindfulness is very important because if they are in your unconscious mind, it means that you are not aware of them, right? So, uh, if you are not even aware of them, how can you even start addressing them? And uh, it's not easy to become aware of them. You need to put the work into it because your ego starts resisting them. So these limiting beliefs are uh, like our shadows. You have to do the shadow work. And uh, psychologist Carl Jung even spoke about the, the shadows in our psyche. And um, if you start practicing mindfulness, and meditation, there are various uh, mindfulness uh, exercises which you can do. I'll tell you all about them. Um, you'll start inviting these limiting beliefs to come into your conscious mind. And what happens to the shadow when you shed light on them? It diminishes, right? So uh, that's the beauty of it. I find this to be a very powerful metaphor because that's actually what happens. So for example, mindful mindfulness exercises, even just um, a simple taking a walk in nature, for example, and being mindful instead of being lost in your thoughts, you invite yourself to be fully present and you observe your environment. You pay attention to the sounds, to the beautiful colors that's surrounding you in nature. So that's a, a simple exercise which I used to do. And uh, it's really powerful. Like these, these exercises seem to be so basic, but yet we do not do them because we are so lost in our minds most often. Yeah. And right. <laughs> so I. And Keep, I'm sorry. I, is it okay if I go back and just kind of, uh, kind of encapsulate and repeat what where you're at and what you're talking about, so that we're totally on the same page? That we yes. have a, a lot of us, maybe most of us, self-limiting beliefs that we don't even know we have, and they're limiting us, and yet we don't even recognize that they're there. 
And so you're suggesting that one of the first tools that we need to do is to shed some light on those beliefs that maybe we we aren't aware of, and you're doing it through a process of mindfulness. And I would love to talk a little bit more about what you mean by mindfulness. I hear that word a lot, and it means slightly different things to different people, but taking some time to slow down and maybe taking a walk in nature and just recognizing the beauty and opening our eyes and our hearts to the wonderful things that are out there. And somehow that clears a little bit of space so that those subconscious thoughts can help. We can become aware of them. It's like, oh my gosh, I feel like I am whatever it is that I feel like. And I don't know what your self-limiting beliefs were, but mine were that I don't matter and I am invisible. So those were some of my self-limiting thoughts that you know, they were there um, and I had to find them before I could get rid of them. So in your process, you're finding these thoughts. So what does mindfulness mean to you? What, what, when we talk, use that word so that we are meaning the same thing when we use it, what does it mean to you? Yes, um, that's a very beautiful explanation, Linda. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, mindfulness, as you said, it can mean a lot of different things to people. But uh, it's basically uh, becoming awake, becoming present in your life. I like Taking that. a step back. <laughs> okay, perfect. We will go with that. Okay, so you were talking about going through nature and going through these things and coming up with this process. So once, once I recognize these thoughts, these self-limiting beliefs, then what's the next step to get rid of them? So as you start becoming aware of, of these thoughts and self-limiting beliefs, it's important to start questioning them. And at that point, you can realize that these are just thoughts. It doesn't mean that it's the truth. It is your perception of truth. So you can start playing around with these thoughts and uh, you can start shifting them to uh, self-empowerment talks instead of self-negative thoughts. So at the beginning, they might start to feel a bit like, like you're lying to yourself because obviously you're sticking to the old belief, the way you have been programmed. But... Uh, the same way that through repetition, you learned and you formed this limiting belief and it became your truth. The same way the empowering belief will eventually become your truth. And that's how you start shaping your new reality. Wow, isn't that beautiful? So before these, these thoughts and these ideas that came in, and maybe we don't even know where they came from, but then the new plan and the new idea, you are making a conscious choice to decide who you are and what you want to be. And isn't that empowering? Just the very thought of that is amazing. It takes us from a place of weakness and, you know, I just am what, you know, the world and whatever turned me into. And now it's no, 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 no. Actually, I get to choose. I get to choose who I am and I get to choose what I am. I love that. I love that. It's a hard process to unlearn things and to relearn something new because I mean, when you said, this is my truth, what the things that, that were in my head, I, I didn't think I was thinking them or believing them. I thought that's what was true. And so to question that, it, it kind of messes with you for a little bit, kind of pulls the rug out from under you. It's like, wait a minute. You mean all these things that I thought were true maybe weren't? So what is true? You know, it, it kind of messes with you. Did it do that to you while you were working through this process? Oh, yes, yes, for sure. It, uh, it's like you start experiencing cognitive dissonance even because uh, what you have been believing for I don't know how many years, you start realizing that actually that wasn't true. And it's like you, you start 
questioning everything then, then what else did I believe that was not true? What else did I say to myself that I cannot do? And people underestimate their own capabilities because they set these limitations on themselves. Ooh, so they set these limitations on themselves. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I just had to grab that golden nugget. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yes, uh, they don't even realize what they're capable of. And um, it's mind blowing, like you, they do this unconsciously. So when you start unlearning what you have learned, as you said, and you start learning new uh, beliefs and new truths, you find that you're, you're able to go beyond what you have ever imagined to be is even possible. For example, for me, I never thought I would be able to leave my, my little home country, my little island in Europe and move to Asia, uh, to the other side of the world and start a new business and feel so empowered to do all these things. So the same with people. For example, if you're scared of uh, public speaking, but you've always dreamed of having uh, a career in politics or in teaching, for example, but because you're so scared to sit in front of a group of people, because God knows what you're telling to yourself, that what these people are gonna think when you sit in front of them, but you would never go for it. Wow, isn't that wonderful? And sometimes it can also be a little bit scary because if you can do something more or bigger, that involves taking risks. And sometimes we just want to stay in our tiny little comfort zone and, and it's scary to reach outside and to become something more. And man, if I heal grace, if I, if I do these things you're talking about, I might have to step out of my comfort zone and do something more. But if I stay in my comfort zone, then I can keep all of my excuses to just stay where I am and not to try anything new. So it's kind of interesting as we're looking at this, there are pros and cons to both things. There are pros to staying where we are and there are pros to healing and moving forward. And I feel like until we decide that we want to change more than we want to stay the same, we won't do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And in fact, I had that, that moment of realization when my, my own coach was questioning me back then. And I realized through these answers that I was scared of my own success. And I felt this so strange, like, why would you be scared of breaking free and having your own success? Because it's, as you said, it means that you have to take risks and risks makes us feel uncomfortable because they push you out of your comfort zone. But what a lot of people mistake is that just because you are comfortable, just because you are in your comfort zone and you are feeling secure in whatever position you are in, it doesn't lead to happiness and fulfillment because you're not growing mm. and growth growth is a is one of our basic needs right expanding isn't that true how many people say they're frustrated at their work because they feel like they're just running on a treadmill and they're not progressing and they're not moving anywhere that innate desire to progress to improve to become better it is a part of us. And I love that you made the clarification that our comfort zone doesn't equate with fulfillment. Isn't that interesting? So you are a beautiful example of, of growing and of becoming more. Now you talk about having a relationship with ourself. And you also mentioned that you were in an, a relationship that was horrible. And isn't it interesting that we have to fix our relationship with ourself before we can have a good relationship with another person? A lot of times we feel like, man, there's something missing. And, and I need some person to fill that hole and to make me feel complete. And the weird thing is when you get together with someone and they don't fill that hole, you think, oh, it's all your fault. You are such a whatever. And we don't realize the hole is actually in me. 
And I have to mm -hmm. fix my holes before I'm ready to have a good relationship. So will you teach us more about how do you have a good relationship with yourself? Yes, that is a very, very important factor. And I see that a lot of people don't understand this concept that you're saying. So uh, it's very important to have a good relationship with yourself because um, otherwise, as you're saying, other people cannot complete you. You have to be whole and complete as yourself. So how do you have a good relationship with yourself? And I still use these uh, techniques myself. For example, I make sure that I have some quiet time every day and I sit with myself and I allow space and time for self-reflection. And I have conversations with myself and maybe it sounds silly, but it's really actually a very good technique. I speak to myself like I'm speaking to a friend and I say, hi, Grace, how are you doing today? I noticed that earlier this morning you felt a bit uncomfortable during uh, that conversation or when you experienced that thing. Why were you feeling uncomfortable? What happened there? And um, I pay a lot of attention to my emotions, uh, which is something that I never did before because I used to feel like my emotions and my needs are not valid. So paying attention to what you're feeling. Oh, I love that. And uh, that I think that's very powerful because emotions are our uh, internal navigation system. So they tell you what you need to pay attention to, basically. And uh, when you learn how to ignore your emotions and what you're feeling, you will be misguided. So that's why it's important to take uh, a step back from your busy schedule and uh, pay attention to these emotions. And the thing that triggers you is usually the thing that you need to pay attention to the most. Wow. Because your, your system is telling you your ego gets threatened, it gets triggered. So why? Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, so as I'm recapping this developing a relationship with ourself, you take some quiet time and you are making an effort to become self aware. How do I feel? And you're even verbalizing that. How do I feel? And then you are allowing yourself to feel your emotions. And you are allowing yourself to, to be who you are and, and to have that compassion that you are allowed to have emotions and to have feelings rather than deny them. And I also love that you mentioned that you treat yourself like a friend. You know, a lot of times when we have self-talk, those things we say in our heads, you talked about talking out loud to yourself or, or in your head or whatever, we all do it, whether or not we admit it. We say things like, oh, I screwed up again today. Why am I such a failure? Or why did I, da, 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 da. why can't I do anything right? And that self-talk that goes around and around are usually very negative and very harmful. And we would never say those things to a friend. I, Grace, I would never come to you and say the things that were going on in my head because they're mean. But somehow mm -hmm. we think that if it's, we're doing it to ourselves, then it's okay. I mean, some of the things that were going on in my head, I wouldn't even tell somebody that I hated, you know, because they're mean. So I think when we learn to treat ourselves like a friend, like you suggested, that is a huge step in learning to improve our relationship with ourselves and how very important that is. So excellent advice. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that's a very good observation uh, because uh, even me, when I was paying attention to some of the things that I was saying to myself, I was like, that is so mean. Like, I, I wouldn't even that. say it to anyone. <laughs> You're so harsh on yourself and you don't even realize it. <laughs> 
Yeah. Or sometimes, unfortunately, we think we deserve it because I really am all of those horrible, awful, nasty things. And it's not fair. It's not fair because maybe I did make a mistake. Maybe I'm not perfect. In fact, I guarantee you I'm not perfect, but, but I do good things also. So I think where we focus makes a big determination as well. Like if I focus on everything I do, that's bad. And I think, wow, I stink. Or if I turn it around and say, no, I am kind. I, I, I did this and I, I'm successful. I did this well, or I did this well. I think that can kind of help put us in a, a different direction. Oh yes, 100%. Because uh, as you said, where, where focus goes, energy flows, right? Ooh, so <laughs> It, it, everything is going to be enhanced. So uh, a lot of people tend to focus on what they don't want, for example. And that's what reality gives them more of. So you need to shift what you're focusing on and focus on what you actually want. And that's where energy starts to flow into that. Mm. Isn't that the truth? And it, and it works whether we believe it or not. And that's the interesting thing is if we're thinking, focusing on things that we don't want, then they happen. But again, we don't, we don't realize this is something that I'm thinking. And so it's happening. We just think, well, that's just the way things are. One time I went to get a haircut and, um, you know, a guy in the chair next to me, he was talking to his, the hairdresser and he was complaining. He said, every time I get a little bit of extra money, something breaks in my house. The car gets a flat tire or the refrigerator needs to be fixed. And it happens every single time. And he went on and on, like for the whole time that I was there, this same thing repeated in different forms. And I thought, wow. I know that that's true. I know that it is absolutely true for you. I know you're experiencing this, but that's not what happens for me. And so it doesn't happen for everybody. And then do we realize that there's a cause and effect between what we're saying and what we're thinking and what kind of results we're getting? And so it was, it was a very informative haircut. I came home thinking, yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm glad that I'm not saying that all the time. And, and he was not a particularly pleasant person to converse with because it wasn't very, wasn't very fun. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And it's very interesting what you're saying because I had a similar experience as well. Um, I went to, to, uh, to buy some things from the beauty shop and the, this guy was telling me, uh, the owner of the shop was telling me how he was uh, washing his uh, his van earlier. And he was like, I know that something is going to happen to this van. I, I can feel it, you know. And that's actually what happened. His expectations came true because his van, unfortunately, got damaged. And he was telling me how every time this keeps happening to him, and this was during my period of transformation. So I felt like the universe is trying to communicate with me and show me that it's actually true. Your thoughts and your expectations and your beliefs are very powerful because you create your own reality. And as you said, whether you believe it or not, this is actually how things work. So you need to really pay attention to the kind of thoughts and beliefs that you have because they have power over your reality. Isn't that amazing? That is a message that I keep hearing because I need to keep hearing it until I, you know, make the changes. I'm a work in progress, Grace. I don't know about yourself. I've come a long way and I'm doing great, but I'm not done yet. I still have more, more on my path to travel. And so I appreciate learning new things from people who are smarter than me. And I am grateful to be able to be conversing with you today, Grace, and for the things that you have taught me and reminded me. And thank you for visiting with me today. Oh, thank you, Linda. It was really a pleasure. And uh, for me, it's also a work in progress. I'm always uh, working on proving myself and seeing where I could tweak myself and become a better version of myself. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? So then we get to continue to fulfill that desire to grow and to improve. 
and I plan to continue growing and improving little by little till I'm done. Yeah, for sure. I agree with you fully. <laughs> In closing, I'd like to share a quote by author Dale Carnegie. He said, when dealing with people, remember, you are not dealing with creatures of logic, but with creatures of emotion. Today, I invite you to increase your emotional intelligence so that you can improve your relationships, including the relationship you have with yourself. See you next time on Linda's Corner. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Linda's Corner, please share and subscribe to help us reach new listeners. I also invite you to check out my nonprofit, Hope for Healing, at the website hopeforhealingfoundation.org for free ebooks, free audiobooks, and other free resources to help increase happiness, build confidence and self esteem, strengthen relationships, manage stress, and calm feelings of depression and anxiety. I also invite you to grab a copy of one of my books, like Crushed A Journey Through Depression, or Amazon bestseller You Got This an action plan to calm fear, anxiety, worry, and stress. See you next time on Linda's Corner.